that'll make a bit of a difference. The trouble is the machinery's gotten so big now. It was coming in and rotating, nearly tipping over, and now it's... Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today it's Friday. I haven't put a video on for, I'd say probably for a week now because we've just been so busy doing other things. This week we uh, got the subsoiler out, took the legs off. Man, they were, they were really tricky to, get to uh, undo the bolts. And uh, I took the, took the shins off, they were just worn out, some of the wings. And um, I've sent them to, uh, given them to somebody who works on the farm called Craig. And he does the, uh, works in the workshop. And uh, he's just gonna weld up the, um, the legs. So hopefully by next week sometime we'll get those back. And I've got a set of uh, Spalding's um, tungsten points to put on the sides uh, of those legs because within a week I'd literally worn out the, what was left on the legs. There wasn't very much left on them, um, but it did wear them out. And I think that's because on sandy land, where it's light here, it's just very hard wearing and quite abrasive. So we'll get those legs sorted out, get them fixed. Today I've just been putting the front weight on the John Deere. We picked up a muck spreader yesterday. We were going to get the ATS, but that's been delayed, unfortunately, for a little bit of time until we can try that tractor out. I've just got, what have I got in here? I've got a Greg's to start my um, muck spreading journey off today. And um, very mess and one very messy loader. We'll um, give it a clean off afterwards. And um, so yeah, it's all going pretty well. Um, I went to the doe show yesterday with dad. We whipped down to Essex and uh, we, we're looking at a mower. I think it was a SIP mower, three meters. And God, they look a really good mower. Heavy, solid, well built. The one we looked at didn't have a, it hasn't got a conditioner. It's fairly basic. I think it'll be brilliant for what we want. Um, but, so we'll just give it a bit of time really because it's, it's on an auction so maybe we'll get it maybe we won't um, and then we also looked at a couple of other things which we were quite keen on um, we looked at a Kawasaki mule for replacing the gator in the next few years because you can't get a gator at the moment and I don't think he, the, the guy from the Kawasaki stand said um, it's quite difficult to get Kawasaki now so I don't know so um, anyway dad looked at buggies just looking at loads of things like mini diggers and I mean, just random things you look at shows and there was a really nice John Deere 7530 in, in really good condition very original um, but it, it had done a few hours but it was we were looking at it anyway but uh, we've got the six half for now so right we'll go and do this muck spreading so it's kind of funny this morning it was absolutely lobbing it down and we couldn't really get into the field or do anything much now this afternoon it's just backed off a bit so it's dried out a little bit I know it seems a bit wet on this field but just enough so that I can get this muck out of here. I don't know if we're going to even spread this muck on this field or on another field. Um, but anyway, we've been meaning to do this job for a while. It just so happened this muck spreader was in the area. There's the John Deere. I put that on the spreader earlier on today. Backed it up 90 degree at a 90 degree angle. Then we'll load it from the other way. Another year of spreading. It always comes around so quickly. Yeah, I used to spread muck with this R6930 in that spreader. Yeah, sometimes if I'm doing a, a tedious task like this, I need some revs. I'll just put the revs up a little bit on the hand throttle and then it'll just keep the RPM up and then my throttle down there becomes the uh, transmission speed and it works pretty well. Improved with that loader since last year. A few little tricks I've learned since I used the uh, Agri High one last year. Right. All right, so we're just going to take a few loads out to this field. It's called Top Field, and unlike when I last used a spreader uh, with the 6.9, we've got a little bit of technology on this tractor. So we've just set up the uh, GPS up, and it's all a bit complicated. There is a shear bolt on this little muck spreader and it does go every now and then. One of those things sometimes. Get her up to speed. I managed to get a row out of that load. We've just got a little bit left in the spreader. I'll probably turn it down a little bit but then again I don't want to put that many loads on this field. So as you can probably tell since my last video all the hedges have been done now. It's February the 4th now and uh, yeah we're sort of getting towards that springtime uh, planting time of the year so I've got the, I've got the seed delivered the other day, the spring barley seed. That's just currently in the shed and then we'll um, probably get that out next week and start drilling the spring barley.
All right, so it's the next day now, and uh, we did a bit of muck spreading yesterday afternoon, and we're going to do some more today. Unfortunately, the filters went on this last night, the fuel filters, because the I think they were just clogged a bit, and then we've had a bit of problems with the fuel. I think the biofuel nowadays means that the tractors don't run as well. It, it just depends, you know, what sort of where you're getting your fuel from. I think there's different batches and things. So I went down to Ben Burgess this morning, got a couple of filters, just put them on the tractor. Uh, you can see them there. I've just put one on the front, and there's another one on the side. I have to take the panel off, which is a little bit of a devil to get that off. I'll just shut the bonnet, and uh, we'll be away. All right, well, we're back in the field now, just spreading off the rest of the top field. Pretty much halfway through this, and I think I'll finish finish that in a little while. And then we'll go onto another field, which is called Vicarage. And both of the fields we're muck spreading are going to go into sugar beet. So there's no point putting muck on the spring barley land this year. We, we want to try and do the sugar beet fields. Hopefully, if I do the subsoiling properly as well, we should notice a slight increase in sugar beet yield because towards the end of last year the, the yield was down a little bit so we'll see if we can uh, see what we can do. I'm just leaving the tally handler next to the tractor uh, when I get out so that it's easier um, we don't have to walk as far to get into the machines. It works working out pretty well. And then where I get out, easy to get into the loader, come machine to the other. The one man operation. Okay, well, I've just had to stop muck spreading. When I come in with the muck spreader, it goes in that hole and nearly tips over. So if I put you guys over here, we're going to hopefully um, make it so that I can just put a bit of. I'm just going to put some stone in there. make a bit of a difference. The trouble is the machinery has gotten so big nowadays that, uh, that unfortunately it makes big holes like this in the fields and sort of in the gateways. So there we are. Right now we're coming into the field and I can't tell you how much of a difference that has made with the spreader. Before it was coming in and rotating nearly tipping over and now it's still nearly tipping over but not as bad. <laughs> not as bad as it was. We'll get the Get a friends with a digger who uh, come over and try and sort that out at some point. Alan Collier. Have a look at it. going now. Okay, well it's sort of towards the end of the day now. We've had a good day's muck spreading. I'll probably finish the rest of this this evening. And then that will hopefully be this job done for another year. It always comes around so quickly. And uh, I'm sure it will come around again next year. And hopefully quite soon we will get the Massey Ferguson 8S from TNS so that I understand. And it's been quite difficult over the last six months with demos on tractors because of the uh, short chip shortage when a demo tractor comes in if it gets sold they generally don't get replaced at the moment so um, hopefully if everything goes well we'll get some more demos in the future otherwise we'll keep using our equipment and uh, won't have to rely on demos the 6R is doing really well I know a lot of people like that tractor and uh, you know to be honest there's the new 6R 185 out. Maybe if the uh, Adloos keeps being reliable on it, we could keep it for another few years yet. Who knows? Um, but the way the world's going and chip shortages and stuff, it's difficult to get parts. And uh, also, I mean, tractors themselves are so expensive now. I mean, to look at a replacement of, of that 6R is about £130,000 when, uh, you know, that one's doing a pretty good job. So you could buy a house for a new tractor nowadays. So yeah, maybe the 6R, 615R will become a classic, classic tractor, who knows. I think we will go and have a look at the new ones, the 6R185 at Nottingham very soon. Um, there's an event up there somewhere in February, so we should go up there and have a little look. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the back spreading content for this year. Enjoy your weekend, whatever you're up to, or your week, and I'll catch you on the next one.